Hello and welcome to Ivy Creates. Today I'm going to be painting a little doodle puppy named Dudley. And uh, for the sake of this, we're going to call him Bubbles because I paint him in a bubble bath. First thing I'm going to do is print out a black and white and use a piece of graphite paper just to get my bearings on exact proportions for the puppy dog. Um, that's what we're going to do to just put our basics down. And then I'm going to be painting the background. And the background can change. It doesn't have to stay one particular color. I just wanted to go ahead and have something in there. So now you can see I'm going to go ahead and put in some color blocking, which is just putting the darker colors in to give you more line and depth so you can actually see what you're painting. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to start blocking in some of the midtones after I do the uh, color blocking of the dark tones. At this point, it can be messy, it can be out of sorts, and you don't have to worry about it. This is super easy to do. You just put some colors where you think the colors need to be going by your picture. Um, you can start with the, you know, really dark brown tones and black tones and then work your way up to a little bit more of a grays and tans because this is a lighter colored puppy dog. And so, and you can see at this point that I, um, I've actually got him to where he's going to be in a tub because that's why I'm calling it Bubbles because I want him to be in a tub and he does have his mouth open. So I'm putting a little pink on the tongue and adding some different colors. You will see me from time to time use a heat gun to speed up the drying process. Um, well, you can also use a blow dryer. You don't have to use a heat gun. Um, and I use my little paint pots to mix my paint in. I don't use a palette because it's just much easier for me. And I'm very, very frugal. So I like to save my paint. And being able to put a lid on it saves me money. Because like I said, paint is precious. So you can see I'm starting to get into a little bit more detail. I'm going in and adding some whites and some highlights and different colors. And you will see me several times go back with a dark and then come back with a light and then maybe go back over it again with a dark. With um, dogs in particular, well, most animals, their skin color may be different color than their fur. So you want to do the underpainting and the color blocking to give a representation of what the skin color is. And you can always come back later with a uh, paint over that and add more color to it and that gives it more depth so that way the skin if the skin say is pink or if it's brown or something but the fur is white it'll show through um, with a transparent lighter uh, paint you can always because i do use acrylic i'm a multimedia person and so you can always thin your acrylic down with paint with water and um that gives you a thinner, more transparent color so that your other colors can show through. And it works best, of course, when you dry it off between the different coats, unless you're planning on mixing the colors. So you can see I'm now adding a little bit more tan to my background because I wanted it to be closer to um, what my client's um, bathroom was. And that is the reason why we're doing this puppy in a bubble bath. And his brother Dax is going to be wearing a towel and a robe um, because these guys are going in her bathroom. And it'll be very nice in there and, you know, represent that they're getting a, a bubble bath. So now you can see I'm going back in. I'm using the Faber-Castell Artist Pit pens. And just going in and adding little details and little fine hairs with my brush pen. It's much easier that way, I find. Um, I can't ever quite get small enough strokes with the actual brushes when I'm using my acrylic paint. So sometimes using the pens in between. And this is a combination of like an India ink pen and they have, I have some uh, alcohol pens. 
and they are transparent. Most of them are slightly transparent, which is nice because you can layer the colors and give it, you know, like I said, more depth. So I'll go back in with the pins. You can see I'm adding more dark into the shadowed areas of the puppy dog's fur. And I'll go back in and add more of the highlights into the fur as well. I, I use every different kind of marker and paint you could possibly imagine. I'm not a stickler for one or the other. Uh, if I do find something like the Faber-Castell artist uh, pit artist pins, I do love those a lot. They make me very happy and they work very well. Um, they have transparent whites and they have opaque whites. And opaque means solid. And of course the transparent means see-through. So the see-through ones you can layer better. Um, and say if you get too bright of a color or something like that, using a transparent one, you can go and you can mute the color down so it's not as bright. And the wonderful thing about paint is that you never have to worry about it because if you paint something, you just wait till it dries. And if you don't like it, you paint over it. It's not hard to do. And these really do make the best gifts for pet parents, uh, for Christmas, for holidays, birthdays, even posthumous gifts. Um, so anytime that you can give a gift to a pet parent of, uh, you know, the portrait for their their loved animal, um, they're going to be very, very happy. And it's something that not everyone has or could get. So do give it a try. I think you can see that my technique is fairly easy. Um, I think that, I mean, if it's good enough for the natural National Portrait Gallery in London, it's good enough for us to do it. So using a black and white photo or even a pencil sketch and then using graphite to apply it onto the canvas is, um, you know, the graphite paper is just like copy paper somewhat. You just put it behind your little photo and copy it on there and then you just start to paint in your details. And uh, you can see I go back and I'll, I'll use paper towels to wipe off more paint or I might add more paint. It's just any number of things and you can also go back through my playlist and see some of the pet portraits I've done that I've taken more time with um, and taken slower. Uh, this was probably, oh, I don't know how many hours of film uh, going through filming it, at least four hours, if not more of, of filming. And then I cut it down to about 12 minutes when I get done. And that is, you know, even taking breaks and, and doing stuff in between. So um, I plan to eventually have a Patreon. Uh, oh, well, I do have a Patreon. I just haven't put anything on it yet. Or get some, you know, other Etsy things open for you guys that are more detail and slower. But this is just a quickie little pet portrait that you can make as a gift. And I like to do pet portraits with personality. Got lots of peas in there. But uh, the pet portraits with personality means um, I try to add either a little hat or an outfit or something unique that that animal likes or that the client likes. Um, and like I said, this particular client, these are going in her bathroom. So that's why I did what I did with them. And you can see I put bubbles in. The bubbles, I was actually watching a bubble tutorial on YouTube while I was doing this. And so I go back a few times and I do a few different things, add all different colors and also make sure that the, you know, the background color, you can see through the bubble. Um, but it was lots of fun painting the bubbles. I haven't done that in a while. And so I did watch it over and I did go back and change the colors multiple times as you can tell because like I said if you don't like it the first time you can always go back and repaint it and do it all over again so I wanted brighter bubbles so I went and made them brighter with white and then I go back and add the little details over and over and um, again using my a combination of my acrylic paint and then my acrylic you know India ink alcohol markers whatever I'm using for that but I you know give it a try i think you can really have fun with it you know i've i've done pet portraits 
where I've dressed them up in Victorian outfits, um, you know, different things for each animal because they're all different and the clients are all different. So um, I just this down a little bit to show some of the ways that I was doing the bubbles with the little reflection. You do have to be aware of the light direction the light is coming from because that's where your highlights are going to be on your bubbles, on your puppy's eyes, on the side of their fur. Everything is going to be, you know, from the light coming one direction. So you do want to be aware of that. That gives the bright little whites in their eyes, um, makes them look alive. And that's what you really, really want in a portrait. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please leave me a comment. Tell me, you know, your thoughts about it. Um, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Uh, and I hope that you join me and watch some more of my tutorials. And I'm glad to be back and doing them again. I was absent for a little while because I had a granddaughter, but um, I'm back and happy to do them. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything, please leave me a comment and let me know. And let me know if you'd be interested in doing a full-on a uh, course through Patreon or through another platform get for you. Um, I'd be happy to do one for you. Just let me know what, you know, what your questions are. And so now I'm just going back into the bubbles themselves. And I've actually got a metallic white marker at this point that's very opaque. So it'll really show up. It doesn't show up so good on camera, but it is showing up on, on my canvas. So, um... I like doing them on canvas. I don't like doing them on paper so much. I may try it one day, but for me, canvas just seems a little bit more substantial. Um, I know it isn't, but it feels more substantial to me to put it on a canvas. And as always, make sure you sign your work, and I you know, love to see your work as well, so send me some pictures. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. I'm glad you joined Ivy Creates.